Well, hello, welcome to episode 125 of the Confident Live Marketing Podcast. And in today's show, we're going to be talking about Pinterest, using Pinterest to promote your live video marketing. So, and we've got Alisa Meredith on the show. So let's get on with it. We'll be with you just after this. Welcome to the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. Helping you level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of Confident Live Video. Optimize your mindset and communication and increase your confidence in front of the camera. Get confident with the tech and gear. And get confident with the content Content and and marketing. marketing. Together, we can go live! Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode 125 of the Confident Live Marketing Podcast. This is very exciting. In today's show, we're talking about Pinterest. And I've got my good friend, Elisa Meredith, on the show to talk about that. So to let you know that next time, so this is actually going to be, if you're watching live, Uh, tomorrow, uh, but it's also going to be next Friday if you're listening to the podcasts. We're talking about ADHD mindset optimization tips for entrepreneurs. And I've got Dr. Tamara Rosier on. We're going to be talking about that. I'm very excited about that. That's tomorrow uh, or next week if you're listening to the podcast. Uh, But first, let's uh, bring in my first and only sponsor of today. It is the wonderful people at Restream. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit more about a new cool feature that Restream have got. The Confident Live Marketing Podcast is proudly sponsored by Restream. Restream is the complete multi-streaming suite for entrepreneurs. It's the easiest way to broadcast live to over 30 destinations at the same time, including Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, and so much more. Restream Studio makes it so simple to stream directly from your browser. Bring in guests and add your branding, videos, and graphics, and view and highlight comments from your destinations all at the click of a button. Take Restream for a test drive and get your first month completely free at iag.me forward slash Restream. Well, definitely check out Restream. They are awesome. And they've got a new cool feature. They're now integrating with another amazing tool, Descript. Descript is a video Mm. and podcast editing tool. You just bung your video or your podcast into it and it will transcribe it and you can just edit so easily. So now what you can do is you can then re-upload that into uh, Restream and use that uh, for your pre-recorded videos as a live stream. So if you want to get all perfect and all, I mean, I'm a big believer in t- not being perfect and getting the stuff done, but it's a great, great uh, part of uh, Restream and Descript, which I really, really love. And if you can hear that laughing in the background, that is my guest today, Elisa. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Elisa. Um, so let's, let me let let you let me tell you a little bit more about Elisa. Elisa, is Pinterest product specialist and marketing manager at Tailwind, a sought after speaker and teacher on the topics of Pinterest marketing and Pinterest ads. She's spoken at Social Media Marketing World, Agents of Change, and appeared on the Art of Paid Traffic and Social Pros podcast. She's run a digital agency since 2005, which now focuses primarily on Pinterest ads. She lives and paints in coastal North Carolina with Pepe the Couch Potato, Cavapoo, and more cats than she'd like to admit to. Well, welcome to the show, Elisa. Great to see you here. How are you doing? Thanks, Ian. Great to see you too. I'm doing well. How about you? You're not melting well, too much. Too I'm not badly. melting too much. So I don't know whether podcast listeners will be able to hear this, but I have a, a fan blaring. It was supposed to be kind of cool air, um, but... Um, kind of warm air at me it's slightly better than than not having it at all but yeah that so hopefully you can forgive that um but i thought that would be better than me melting Um, definitely so yeah so (laughs) where where you where are you dialing in from today i mean you've you've kind of kind of mentioned it in the in the uh, bio but uh, tell us a little bit more about where you are wilmington north carolina u.s so about 15 minute drive to my favorite beach. Um, it's green and and beautiful here this time of year. Uh, just really love it. It is a gorgeous part of the world. And uh, th- so the next question I was gonna ask you, which is, which I kind of know the answer to, but I, I always like okay. to hear it from you, which is 
how did we first meet? Can, have you got any, because we have actually met some person. Oh yes, I think the very first meeting was at Social Media Marketing World a hundred years ago, <laughs> the year that Blab came out. Is that is that what you remember? Um, well, I, I was hoping you would you'd be able to. I remember we talked about so we 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 definitely talked to each other on the aircraft carrier at Social Media Marketing World, and I mm-hmm. I remember talking to you about was it Meerkat which was oh, kind of the pre- Oh, maybe it was Meerkat. Meerkat. Um, but I think we, we actually kind of bumped into each other virtually before that because I think it was our mutual friend, Emmerich Erner, who introduced us you to me. And I was doing an article and you helped with part of that. You kind of, your experience with using, might have been a Google Pulse or something, I don't know. Does that ring oh, a bell? Funny. Um no. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but there that, you go. that doesn't mean anything. I just remember the the in person meeting. Yeah, and it was on the aircraft carrier. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, there we there we go. I can ju- ju- just to say hello to some people watching. We've got Challenge ITV watching from Vietnam. Great to see you here. Uh, watching live with the Twitch community. Awesome. And Hassan, nice. I'm really sorry to hear this. Is Hassan's from Quebec, Canada, feeling a bit under the weather because I received my second dose of the vaccine, COVID vaccine today. I hope you're feeling better. It, yeah, it it does get better. I'm sure you'll be you'll get there. And Challenge ITV says hello, Elisa. Great to see you here today. And we've got Ooh. Darkness Army uh, watching on YouTube as well. Great, cool. So. How did you get into what you're doing today? I mean, I've known you for for ages. We were in a mastermind together. We, you know, yes. we constantly. We've uh, been through a lot together. <laughs> we have been through a lot, and we could we could share a lot. Uh, Joshua Easter, by the way, is watching on LinkedIn. Great to see you. Uh, let us know where the world you are all watching from, and we're talking about Pinterest today. So mm-hmm. yeah, tell tell us uh, how you got into what you're doing today, uh, wow. and you know, particularly also interested in what why Pinterest? What why is that your particular interest? Oh my yeah so i was i was running a different agency that that did social media and blogging mainly for for certain industries for healthcare and and pest control well when pinterest came out i was just very curious i I was blogging a lot about the different socials and i thought what is this thing um and how can a business use it that was (laughs) was genuine question of mine i knew how i was using it i was using it instead of um browser bookmarks I would just, okay, I want to read that, but not right now. Save it, save it to Pinterest. All right, so how does a business use this? Um, So in an effort to figure that out, I wrote an ebook about it naturally, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) figuring it out along the way. Um, And that led to my first clients. And I just never had, never seen the success like I saw on Pinterest. So I came into social um, back in the day when your Facebook page showed your content to all of your followers. <laughs> and then if we remember when that was taken away, that was a very sad day. So I was really looking for something that that would work really, really well. Not that Facebook doesn't, but I, I wanted something that gave you some satisfaction um, in one particular channel. And so that was it. The traffic that it drives is just unbelievable. Um, and the leads that it was driving, especially for this very first client. Um, so we started kind of building his content strategy around Pinterest and that it just, it just blew up. And I thought, okay, I still am going to do the other marketing, but there's something special here. And, and I continue to feel that way. Well, that's awesome because I think I've been speaking with, with, a talk, chatting with a lot of marketers recently, uh, you know, and this is not a new thing, but it feels in the last couple of years, particularly just things seem to be getting more and more difficult. You know, organic social is, you know, everyone's go talks about it. it's mm-hmm. dead. You know, you mentioned that about Facebook pages. I mean, who sees the posts in a Facebook page unless you promote it and it's a lot of, a lot of depressed people, but you know, Pinterest <laughs> seems to be, f- full of like really positive people, um, it seems. Although I can see we've got uh, Regine watching on LinkedIn and I think we're gonna be talking about this. So thank you for this. Uh, Watching from Colorado, I've fallen out of Pinterest love. Not really, just don't use it as much. So we'd like some more biz use ideas. And that's what we're gonna be talking about on this show. So uh, stay with us. Uh, But I want to, I wanna ask this first because like I think a lot of my listeners, a lot of my viewers, 
will know what Pinterest is either vaguely or maybe even a little bit, but some people might not even know at all. So how would you describe Pinterest? Is it yet another social network uh, or is it, is, what, what is different about Pinterest? Give, give us a, a bit of an explanation. Yeah, so it's really more of a hybrid social and search engine. Uh, you know how you use it, you know, if you're using it. If not, I can tell you, uh, people are looking for in information and inspiration. So they might have a vague idea that they want to accomplish something or try something. And they're really not married to any particular solution yet. So 97% of the searches that happen on Pinterest are not branded, which means that people who don't have a lot of brand recognition can still be found on Pinterest, which I think makes it a tremendous value. And then that's kind of what sets it apart from Google in a way. The intent is a little bit different. They're looking for tips, for ideas, um, for help trying something new. So is it just another social? No. Um, is it social? Well, Pinterest wants it to be. So the, while you still have that search and discovery, right? So there's a, there's a lot to consider with SEO. And the fact that Pinterest can read your images, it, it knows what items are in your images, it's very smart. There is also now an added social component uh, with idea pins. So last year, late last year, uh, they made an announcement that, hey, in the past, we've, we've worked really hard to connect pinners, the people who use Pinterest, with ideas. And now we want to kind of get beyond that and connect pinners with these content creators. So there has been a shift in the way Pinterest wants us to use the platform, which, which means that our marketing tactics have to change a bit. So yeah, it is good to think of it now as kind of a hybrid. There's that search, yeah. but there's also a bit of social. Well, I suppose in, the, in a in a similar way to, I mean, YouTube itself is a it's a it's a content platform for videos, but it does have mm -hmm. a social element to it. And on Pinterest, yeah. you can you know you can comment on a on a pin, can't you? You can you can repin pins. That so there is there is a social element to it, but it's never been like the big the big thing. Now with Pinterest, it's always been images. So and correct me if I'm wrong, it tends to be portrait of a you know tall images you know landscape mm -hmm. images are kind of frowned yeah. upon but yeah. it seems that things have uh changed and updated now there are videos uh, as well can you maybe tell mm -hmm. us about the different types of things that we can pin um on pinterest Yes. So you have your static image pins and that's what most people post. So we wanted to see at Tailwind, um, where I'm content marketing manager or marketing manager, sorry. Um, we wanted to see what are people actually sharing from Tailwind and other places to Pinterest. And what we found was that there are 95% of what people are sharing are static image pins. So that's kind of the foundation of your, your Pinterest activity. But we also have video pins and about 4% of what people were sharing are video pins. Video pins have get a lot more uh, reach and distribution. Um, and so the, like there's a, a very strong signal here that we should be using more video, which no surprise, right? That's kind of the case on every single platform. Um, the, the bigger, new thing is idea pins we used to they used to be called story pins um but pinterest likes to kind of be a little bit different <laughs> and uh, so they have idea pins which um it's a a multi-page format it can be video it can be static images but they're strung together um and they have no link so the idea is you put all the content needed for this idea so if it were a recipe or a step by step, they wouldn't need a link, they would see it all in your idea pin. And the idea of those is that's where the social really happens. So they want people to connect with you as a creator. And of course, it's a way to keep people on the platform, as opposed to sending more traffic out. Ah, That makes sense. I, I have to admit, I found that very, very confusing. As soon as Pinterest uh, announced, well, I, I heard this from you, uh, actually, that story pins had become a thing I thought oh okay that makes perfect sense and then like it seemed like the next minute it became <laughs> like idea pins like oh uh -huh. my goodness like to make to me well it kind of makes sense but it also confuses me but I think your explanation really makes sense there uh, and you've mentioned the whole thing about links now 
Mm-hmm. I was about to say story pins. Idea pins don't have links. Correct. Um, and that is that's the case on a lot of on Instagram, unless you have like ten thousand followers and mm-hmm. you've, you've got the you've got that feature. So I think we kind of, we kind of understand that. But one of the the big things about Pinterest is the fact that you can link the pins to your website or somewhere else. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about the big advantages of using Pinterest because I've heard this many times that when you compare Pinterest to net social networks like Twitter or Facebook, the the longevity of a pin is well, it's a lot longer. <laughs> Tell us a <laughs> it bit is more about a lot that. longer. Yeah. So years ago, it used to be the half life of a pin or the point at which you would get half of the engagement you were ever going to get engagement, meaning clicks, um, saves, all that good stuff. Uh, that was about four months. And but that was just an average. So you would have pins that you put out years ago that are still like your top traffic drivers on Pinterest. So it, it really is a, a long term game. It has changed a little bit. So when we did a study uh, at Tailwind, we found that that half life term is about two months now, but still a whole lot longer than a tweet or a Facebook post or, or anything else. Be- and that's because of that search and discovery aspect of it. So if someone searches for something kind of related to yours, Pinterest might say, oh, the best article on this was written two years ago, and it's it's kind of related. So I'm going to show that one. It, it, so it's what you do today can pay off for years to come, which is really appealing. I think as marketers, we want to know that what we're doing is, is not just going to disappear in a few hours. No, I, we definitely want that because, you know, we're spending all this time and in some cases money on promoting our stuff, whether it's a live video or whether it's a, a you know, some kind of product or whatever. So we want to make sure that we're investing that time wisely. And so mm-hmm. that's one of the, when, when you look at your Google Analytics and you look at your social referrals, often like Facebook and Twitter are, aren't that great. But if you've invested in Pinterest, quite often you'll see that Pinterest is, is high, high up there, which is great. So that, that's, the, that's the links. That's a really good thing. How about reach? Because we, we were talking before about, uh, you know, being a bit depressed. We, I need to play some sad music at this point about, <laughs> you know, like yeah. the, the death of organic social. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to get too over the top here, but is is what's the scene on Pinterest when it comes to reach? If we post something on Facebook, we're probably, unless we've optimized things a lot and we have a very engaged audience, it's not going to be that great. But on Pinterest, if I was to post something on Pinterest, what's the likelihood that the reach is going to be significantly higher? Uh, it's pretty good. And part of the reason why is because on your Facebook page, for peop- in order for people to see your content, they either have to like your page or you need to promote it to them. Whereas on Pinterest, your reach is typically going to be a lot higher than your number of followers. So even if I'm not following you, if I search for a thing, or even if Pinterest thinks I might be interested and they serve it up in my feed, I'm going to see it, even though I haven't followed you yet. So there's a big potential there. And I, I, another thing I just want to point out is that um, with idea pins, they do not disappear. So oh, okay. unlike with the other platforms, they're going to be around forever. And that tends to be where people are seeing the distribution or the, the reach right. of their content is with idea pins, which no surprise, right? It's, it's what, what Pinterest wants us to create. And that's just typical across all the platforms. That's good to know. Now on with idea pins, do you create them on your mobile device like you tend to do on other platforms or is it different? How, you know, is it, what's oh, the difference? Goodness. Oh, the difference is huge. So um, for Tailwind, I have created a couple of idea pins on desktop and it was an hours long process, literally. Um, well, partially because I wanted it to be as perfect as it could be. Uh, <laughs> but when I create them for myself, I create them on mobile. And the reason for that is that I already have the video on my phone uh, and I just need to add some things to it. And it is so much more, it is so much easier on on mobile than it is on desktop. So highly recommend the mobile experience. You can add sounds and effects and stickers and tag people. Um, it's just a lot easier. So this is all built into into the app, the mobile app on Pinterest, the ability mm-hmm. to add all those things. Okay, that's cool, that yeah. makes sense. Uh, Sam Boffin is here, and Sam was on my Restream show yesterday. Great to see you, nice. Sam. He says, I love Pinterest for fun, 
but I never used it for my business, but I really want to. And I think that's quite oh, a goodness. common thing that, you know, people are using it for fun. But and, and, and I think sometimes it's difficult to make this transition if you're using a network for personal use, for fun, thinking about it from a business point of view. But we're going to be talking about that more uh, today, Sam. So thank you for that. What I want yeah. to ask you, uh, what I w- want you just to explain to us uh, before we move on, Elisa, is we you, you're very helpfully talked about the different types of pins that we can have and we've talked about the fact that your audience can uh repin so to 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 their 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 boards but we haven't actually mm-hmm. talked about boards and the mm. different types of boards and and uh, tell us what else there is to know in terms of pinterest that we haven't covered just so that any, somebody who <laughs> doesn't know anything about pinterest is going to know everything Wow, you're not asking for much, are you? Just, just that, well, I wasn't okay. Not all the intricacies. I mean, of course, I, I should have rephrased that, knowing you, Elisa. So, like, not like everything there is to know. But, okay, okay, yeah, okay. So, I think what the the thing to know, right, is what people are looking for, which we've talked about a little bit. They're looking for information and inspiration. And that goes far beyond wedding dresses and recipes. Um, the searches for Uh, new business ideas has gone crazy this year. Because uh, why? Because it reflects what's going on in the world. People are starting businesses. Uh, So so what is popular in the world? Also popular on Pinterest. It's a great reflection of what we're actually thinking and feeling and doing. So thinking about how to frame what you have to offer in a way that works for Pinterest is really as simple as, as knowing this is about my aspiration for my life. This is not, Pinterest is not the place for me to go on and talk about my business as far as my values. And it just, people don't really care about that. What they want to know is what's in it for them. Uh, whereas on Instagram, maybe they want to get to know kind of the behind the scenes and they want to get to know you and your company and what you stand for on Pinterest. It really is tell me I can do this thing, show me I can do this thing, and I will try this thing. Yeah. So when it comes to boards, because you brought that up specifically, yes, there there is an SEO aspect to all of this, and it it is simpler than Google, fortunately. <laughs> so it's really as simple as being consistent. So using your keywords in places like your pin title, your pin description, the board that you're saving it to, the board description that you're saving it to, um, the content, like if you're going to write a title on your pin, use your keywords there. Pinterest can read that. If you're showcasing an item, make sure that item is very prominent in your image because Pinterest will read that. So they can look at a picture of of a suitcase in a hotel and assign keywords to it on the back end as well. So they're going to say, okay, there's a suitcase, there's luggage, there's travel. They they do all of that. So if you can think, how can I make give a consistent message to Pinterest? They're going to be better able to serve it up to the right people, which matters a lot because initially Pinterest will show your content to the people who follow you. And they're going to take that signal they get from those followers to determine how far to distribute it. So if you um, like just which none of us would do, but say you bought a million followers on Pinterest, um, that's a terrible thing to do (laughs) because none of them are going to engage with your content, which tells Pinterest their followers don't even care about this. So don't bother spreading it beyond their followers. It's just going to be dead in the water. Slightly less dramatic example is um, my account has been an experiment account, of course. And what I have done has resulted in people really not caring about my marketing content. So it goes nowhere on Pinterest. (laughs) And the reason that happened is because um, I started out with business accounts, just posting all business. Then I thought, well, I'm going to add in some personal stuff too. And so I had boards for um, keto diet recipes and hair and all this stuff. And people would follow me. They wanted more of that kind of content. And then when I would work really, really hard on something uh, that I really wanted people to see related to marketing, they were like, give me the hair, you know, give me the keto. I don't care about this stuff. So that sent Pinterest an unfortunate signal 
that they shouldn't distribute my content. So just always think about what signal are you sending to Pinterest? Um, they also will scrape your website every 24 hours. So they wanna see that consistency from what you're promising on the pin to what is on the page. They're gonna look at keywords. Um, they'll look at your title, your description. Oh, sorry, your title, your headers, and also the body content. Um, so keep that consistent with your pin. But one kind of caveat is like on Facebook, you can, you can say something like, why, like three reasons your diet failed, right? And that can work. But on Pinterest, people go to Pinterest for that inspiration and for that feeling of affirmation, like I can do this thing. Um, they're not going there for the negative. And Pinterest has, has done reports showing how important it is to be positive and how much that really works. Even in advertising, you'll have lower advertising costs. So if your article or whatever you're linking to has a somewhat negative spin to it, um, turn it around for Pinterest. Good, good tip. That's really helpful stuff. So on our Pinterest account, we can mm -hmm. have different boards. Are you yes. saying that we should, across the whole of our Pinterest account, we should, we should not be too diverse? Or are you saying that we, we, can, we can have different types of boards that are quite diverse as long as we're very, specific, very careful within the board? Uh, I would say that the only boards you have should be boards that, that support the content you're creating. Okay. Yeah. So another, you could look at your, like your blog categories and each one of those could have a board or two, but you wouldn't want to have a public board for, um, for something that's totally unrelated because you'll attract the wrong followers. You can have a private board, which is what I've done now. So I have my personal ones. I don't want to change accounts. Um, but that won't attract the wrong followers. So we can have a public board, which is what we primarily talking about today you can have a, mm -hmm. a private one for your personal stuff there's also yep. shared boards as well can you touch yeah some? group boards group, group yeah boards. yeah yes so pinterest originally designed those for collaboration on the platform and then marketers realized <laughs> that hey if i share something to a group board that 50 people are in the followers of those 50 people are likely to see my content so it was a it was a great way to increase our distribution that way um, was quite abused and Pinterest figured it out and they're like, that's not why we built this. So <laughs> now they tend to show um, the pins that go into a group board only to that the members of that group board, which is which is great. Personally, I think so, because it is a great tool for actual collaboration. So let's say Ian, you and, and three other families are going to go on a trip. You can all put your ideas in there. You can react to them. You can add comments on them. Yes, I want to do this. No, I don't. Um, you could do this if you were a realtor, right? So you could say, um, "Here, here's our Pinterest board. Here's sections for different neighborhoods. Here are the houses in them. Tell me what you think of them. If you're doing a decorating project, if you're trying to decide what new haircut you want, you know, you want your friends to weigh in on it. It's, uh, there are endless uses for group boards, but it's not for distribution. Makes sense. Marketers spoil everything, don't they? We just, do. We do. Just, Can't help it. I know. I know. <laughs> I, 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 did you see what we did there? I, I kind of like distanced myself from marketers. And at least it just, yeah. I brought you I, around back. I did. Yep. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. It's true. Well, that's that's really helpful. I think we've we talked about all the, the basics of, of Pinterest, really. I, I do want to ask, you know, something that people ask a lot Okay. when it comes to LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn is very much business. It's, it's B2B, mm -hmm. I suppose. And Pinterest, everyone thinks, well, that's b to it's, well, it's not even B2C. It's just like, it, it's just personal stuff. So what, but you know, can you use, if you are B2B, can you use Pinterest? Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. So working at Tailwind, so Tailwind is uh, a software that will allow you to create content and to schedule content and optimize content on social media. Um, and Pinterest is an amazing traffic driver for us. 
So it's a, you know, it's B2B SaaS company. If, if a B2B SaaS company can do well on Pinterest, most other businesses can as well. And the trick to it is to figure out the need and the goal of your audience and to speak to that in a way that inspires them to take action. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here's a cool thing. The number of Gen Z pinners on Pinterest grew 40% last year. When I when I looked at the because um, when you when you go into Pinterest, you can see the audience insights. Um, you can see the makeup of all pinners. You can see your followers. You can compare the two, which is really, really cool. Uh, but when I started to notice that the largest group were those in the 18 to 24 year old range, I thought this has got to be a mistake. <laughs> Um, now it's looking like 25 to 34 is, um, well, let's see, let's see, is that true? Yep. 25 to 34 is now the biggest range. It's flip flop from the 18 to 24. Um, I thought that was a mistake <laughs> because it, Pinterest is kind of uh, like where the moms go. Um, and, but things change, right? So I think that the young people, younger people during, during the pandemic and lockdowns, they were looking for a place that was positive, that wasn't full of fake news um, or or angry rhetoric, right? That was just a happy yeah. place where you can do anything. Um, so definitely kind of playing into that. I think that also influenced um, some of the decision to move really towards idea pins, which are a lot more social and are more about connecting people. Oh, that's really helpful, really interesting that you know you know generation z uh, people are a bigger proportion on on pinterest like if if you're targeting baby boomers or generation x or mm -hmm. men you know and all these you know a lot of people say you you mentioned it before that it's it's kind of a lot of mums use uh pinterest but other other types of demographics on pinterest that it that makes it worth uh using it Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, the number of men pinners or the percentage of male pinners continues to increase. Um, it's still only at about 23% across the entire platform. But if you think about it, because so many people have that idea that, oh, my, my audience isn't on Pinterest, you know, I'm not gonna not gonna bother speaking to them. There's a whole lot less competition. Right. So if, if you're talking to men, um, get in there now, because it, it, it is a slightly ignored demographic. Yeah, definitely. So, oh, has my audio got a bit weird? Oh, there we go. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. That sounded like a robot, um, <laughs> uh, which is not good. So I am not a robot. I am a human being. Uh, so Pinterest is is uh, is definitely something that I I want to look at more when it comes to my marketing sphere. Uh, but I talk a lot about live video. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, this what's the main topic of this show. You can't broadcast live to Pinterest. It's not got a live video part of it, but there are lots of ways that we can use Pinterest. There are video pins. There are also promoted pins. You know, how would you use Pinterest to promote a show such as the one I've got and many of my uh, audience have got or a podcast? What are the, yeah. some of the ways that we could use Pinterest? And, and, uh, and then maybe if you want to tell us a little bit more about Tailwind as well. Okay. So it's, it's going to be very similar to the way any content creator would use Pinterest in that it's not going to be, which I have seen, <laughs> a pin with the face of the host and the guest and just the podcast number. That's not going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. They want to know, what am I going to get from this show? Um, and so I, I looked at a couple of, of people with live shows this morning and to see what they were doing because I knew they'd be doing a good job. One was Kate All at Simple Pin Media. She has a podcast and her pins for that typically are, they look like a blog post pin. And then it will go to her show notes page that has the, um, like you can play the, the audio right in there if you want to. So oh, I think most people do repurpose into show notes or a blog post or something. And that is the ideal when you can send people right to a page like that. Um, another option you can do, and this one I noticed Jeff C is doing, is to repurpose sections of your video using something like Descript 
um, and make an idea pin or a video pin or both, right? So maybe you put a nice cover image on it of like, here's the thing you're going to learn. Like it's a 30 second answer to this question. Um, and then the next slide or the next page is that actual video clip of the person talking. Um, so there are kind of two ways to go at it. One is give them a little piece of content to consume right there or give them a way to get to the show notes or the blog post about your page. Mm, that makes sense. So that this, what we're talking about here is post promotion. This is once you've done your live video, it now no. will appear on either YouTube or Facebook or all over the place if you're using Restream. And you maybe have some show notes as well. I mean, presumably you could send people to a Facebook, uh, the video on Facebook or a video on YouTube, but would you say that's not ideal? I, I would say that's probably not ideal in most cases. Mm. Um, you can even create a pin that just links to YouTube and that doesn't, if you create a pin specially like it, and it will tell them what they're gonna get and even maybe mm. hint that it's on YouTube, that might that might work pretty well. But you, I wouldn't just pin a YouTube video because they're probably not gonna watch yeah, it that, and it looks terrible in the feed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you've got to come up with some kind of graphic. Uh, you know, you could use tools like Easel or Canva or get, mm -hmm. get a designer to do that. It's gonna be yep. a tall portrait image of course as well even if your yes. your video might be landscape like ours is but um you you'll want to do that uh, so mm -hmm. okay that's 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 great for the the post but is there anything that we can do if we've got a live show coming up next tuesday at 5 p.m and it's on a particular topic and we've we've scheduled it so it exists are there any ways that we can promote a live show beforehand it's going to be tricky mm. because it takes Pinterest a little while usually to figure out how to distribute that pin. Yeah. So probably by the time most people see it, it will be done. What you could do is present it in such a way that it doesn't matter whether you're sending them to a place to sign up for notifications or you're sending them to the actual show. But I think like, if you're sending them to a place where they're going to get notifications, maybe they're going to get an SMS text or something. Um, you got to give them something related that already exists, right? So I wouldn't want to just send them to a sign up for next week's show and get a yeah. reminder. I would want it to be get an SMS about this, but while you're here, here is this related topic. That makes sense. So maybe the, a good strategy here would be thinking about promoting, just focusing on the promoting the replay but just mm -hmm. on the whole show I, because if people get hooked on the show and, and and maybe on that page that you're sending them to there is a way for people to sign up for to get notifications the next time you go live and in fact that's exactly what uh, people should be doing so that the they know when you're next going to go live would you say yeah. that's a good strategy oh absolutely yeah and I, I would definitely focus on the post promotion um mm. i i would do a static pin right that leads to that blog post like we talked about i would do an idea pin or several of them that chop it up into little bits so people can get a, an idea of of what the show is going to be about and then it encourages them to follow you you can even see on your analytics on idea pins how many people went to your profile because of that pin how many people followed you because of that pin um so like absolutely send them to your profile. And then in your description, you'll write, um, I, I host the Confident Live podcast and here's what you're gonna learn about it. And here's the link to go find out more about the show. Uh, and then also repurposing uh, the videos that you're making for idea pins into video pins, which also will have a link. So the idea pins don't have a link. What's what what is the call to action then? You know, if people are watching the idea pin, I think we all understand how to kind of create them. You know, you go yep. on your mobile and you 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 can do lots of different things. You can put video in there, you can put but at the end of the day, they've seen it. What's what's kind of the point? Yeah, so the the calls to action are follow and share. So Pinterest will put will kind of add a final uh, page for you that encourages, it gives your like your profile name, your picture, your, a little bit of a description and encourages people to follow you. But that doesn't mean that you can't put in your own final slide before that, that will say, um, 
go to Apple Podcasts and look for this podcast and follow, like, tell people to go subscribe. Mm, makes sense. So that those are the idea pins. Love yeah. that. V uh, and and by the way, with a uh, story pin, if you're putting a video in there, is, is there a, like a max length? Presumably, like it, it, Instagram is 15 seconds. Do we have yeah. some kind of yeah? What's the what's the the li limit? It's 30. Oh, okay, that's yeah. that's that's quite generous. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> who, who'd have thought? Yeah. Like saying 30 seconds is so. That's this the same as. Um, yeah, one thing I'm I'm playing around at the moment with is our Instagram reels and, and even TikTok. I'm not mm. a massive TikTok fan, but uh, TikTok, you've got up to 60 seconds, I believe. Uh, Instagram reels is 30 seconds. Instagram stories are 15 seconds. So I think yeah. it's there's actually a lot of content now that is portrait video. So you've got YouTube shorts, you've yes. got reels. And so actually, do you think it's a smart strategy to create content that you can repurpose for all these different platforms. Always, always it yeah. is. Now, the, the, the one caveat to that, of course, is we know Instagram was pretty quick to say, don't reshare content from other platforms. So in other words, if you're creating this thing in TikTok because it's really easy to edit there, we don't want you sharing it on Instagram. And if you do, not many people are gonna see. Right. So they're going to just they're going to hold back their reach. Pinterest said something similar a few months back, like create content uniquely for Pinterest. But you can still do that. Right. So you're going to take the raw video and then you're just going to process it on each of those platforms differently so that you don't have the watermark um, so that it's special for yes. each one. Yeah, but, that makes, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. So, the, so they, 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 you got to do it. They're quite sneaky, aren't they? they? They look for that little TikTok logo on the bottom. Is mm -hmm. it bottom left? And like. Like, why, you know, they're just out to make our life difficult. But I, I do get yeah. it. I do, I, do, I do get it. It makes yeah. sense. It, yeah. I mean, they don't want to be basically publishing ads for their competitor. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. <laughs> okay, so idea pins, uh, video pins. So mm -hmm. how can we use video pins? And can you give yeah. us a little bit more, you know, what, what are the limits on that? And presumably we can link Ooh. as well on that. We can. So, um, I'm trying to remember what the limits on that are on that. So let me let me look that up for you. Four seconds to fifteen minutes. I I see more like maybe I'm just not really good at them, but I see like a six second watch time. Mm. So keep it really short and snappy. Keep all like make it act active from the beginning. Choose a good cover image um, because even though you you might feel like well the the action is where it's at they're only going to show one video pin moving at a time in your feed. So there might be five video pins, but if they showed all five of them moving at the same time, it would just be a terrible thing to look at. <laughs> right. So, so keep in mind that cover photo and use the tags. They do help with distribution. Um, but video pins do tend to get a lot more engagement than a static pin, not as much as an idea pin, but there's always a trade off, right? Like you said, you can link a video pin. You can't link an idea pin. Okay, makes sense. So experiment with video pins. Mm -hmm. They're good for engagement. So if you're if you're wanting to get build engagement, that might be a good thing. But in terms of actual clicks or watch time, I should they're, click. I mean, what, what are my clicks? Mm, okay. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. Uh, I think the the key is right with an idea pin. You're going to show everything a person needs to do right in that video, so that they are they're satisfied with what they have. They don't need a link because that's something I have seen a lot of comments like, um, how am I supposed to do this? If I can't get to the link, make it so they don't need a link on an, on a video pin. However, you might want to leave a lot um, unsaid, right? So that they are compelled to go and visit. That yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Hassan is back. You don't need to apologize. Had to leave uh, the call. I'm a complete newbie with Pinterest for marketing. Uh, does one have to pay for ads when you put a CTA on an image, for example? And the answer is no. No, isn't that wonderful? It is good. There, isn't there, it? Are, yeah. The thing, though, with I, with um, promoted pins, and you know that that's been close to my heart for a long time, Ian. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, social media. Uh, speaking of social media examiner on it several times, um, they're kind of a bargain. I like a bargain. Yeah. So what I mean by that is not necessarily that the cost per click is lower than other platforms, although 
in some cases it is but what i like about it is you're paying for people to see your pin who wouldn't naturally see your pin what happens when your targeting is good is that those new people who are a whole new opportunity for you are saving your pin themselves and then people who follow them see that saved version of the pin they might click on it at that point you're not paying for any of that you're not paying for any of that added distribution or any of those additional clicks um, you're just paying for clicks on the initial ad that's with a, a consideration or traffic campaign um, so you can expect to get like 20 to 30 percent impact beyond what you're paying for in that kind of downstream mm. impact which I like an extra 20 or 30 percent of my ad spend. I think we all do. We all do. And, you know, <laughs> yes. with the price of Facebook ads going oh up goodness. and LinkedIn being incredibly expensive. Uh, but it's nice to find a, a network out there that's doing something a little bit, a bit more cheap. Um, yeah, it is. And there there's another there's a cool a targeting option they have, which is called an act alike audience which is similar to a lookalike on Facebook, although Facebook, it tends to be a little bit more demographic in terms of mm. the similarities on Pinterest. It's more behavior based. So combining like an act alike of people who've been to your website with a keyword or um, an interest, interest targeting can be very inexpensive, uh, can be really effective and um, you know, it depends on, on your monetization model, whether it makes it sense at all for you to do that. Um, but if it does, I highly recommend checking it out. So promoted pins is the, it's, it's the sim, it's Pinterest sensor to Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads. Yeah. It's, it's where you can promote your pins. How straightforward is it? You know, if you've dabbled in Facebook ads, for example, is it, how straightforward is it moving over to Pinterest promoted pins? It is very simple. Hmm. So I, I know some people get in there from Facebook and they don't know what to do. But I, I think if you just kind of reset your brain and start from simple, um, start from a conversion uh, consideration campaign, which you're paying for clicks, um, get your tracking installed, your events set up on your website, and then just try it out there. Obviously, it's a it's different. So, you know, 460 something million monthly active users much smaller than Facebook, um, but still worth doing. Also, when we talked earlier at the very top of the show about how 97% of searches are unbranded, that means that a lot of your peop the people you attract are going to be very high in the funnel, right? So very early in that stage of awareness, um, haven't really figured out what they're going to do yet, take longer to act on, on an ad. So if you're used to... Um, your sales cycle being a week on Facebook, it's probably going to be more like two weeks or three weeks on Pinterest. So just be prepared that you're really not going to know if they're working <laughs> for a lot longer than when you start a campaign mm. on Facebook. That's re that's great. And uh, at, it's good to know that it's relatively straightforward because I think some of these ad platforms, I mean, Google, Google ads are just like, you almost need a PhD uh, to, to run them, it seems. Um, so that's that's encouraging. So you can use Pinterest, you can use it on the web, uh, you can do lots of cool things with that. You can use it, there's a mobile app as well. Where does Tailwind come into this? What does Tailwind give you that you can't, uh, what's it give you over just using the uh, Pinterest natively? Yeah, so scheduling is super important, right? So we don't want to have to be going on Pinterest every time we want to pin something. Um, there also is some benefit to pinning at optimal times, right? So getting it out there when your followers are most likely to be on and engaged and Tailwind will do that. We'll set up a schedule for you based on your follower activity. The other cool thing is that you can create images inside of Tailwind. So if you just put in your the URL for your, your post or your page, Pinterest or Tailwind will pull in the images from that page. If none of those are, are good as a basis for a pin image, um, you can upload stock photos or, or choose from stock photos, upload other images. And then what we'll do is we'll put the title that you want on all of those images. It's going to be a stream of hundreds and hundreds of options to choose from different styles, 
we take your brand colors, we take your logo and apply and your fonts and apply all that to the options. And then you just kind of scroll through, see which ones you like, and then they can be scheduled out immediately. The other mm -hmm. cool thing is that while you're doing that, while you're creating that pin, you can also create um, Instagram posts, uh, Instagram story, and a Facebook page image while you're at it. That's awesome. Yeah. Lots of cool things. I didn't it know. Is. I there didn't know it did some of those things. Ah. Uh, and there are there are lots of other kind of cool things. I mean, there's oh, isn't this? So correct me if I'm wrong. Are there's loops. Have I got that right? Something loopy. Yeah, there's thing? <laughs> <laughs> loopy thing. Loopy yes, thing. Uh, we have. It's called Smart Loop. That's it. Um, that has been um, very much de-emphasized because Pinterest really wants new content and new ideas. They are really big on new and interesting ideas. So they don't really want the same pin shared over and uh, over too much. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, some people say it works great for them. And yeah, resharing to some extent does work well. But um, yeah, so we're, we're really concentrating more on the creation side of things now to help people make really beautiful and engaging pins um, inside of Tailwind. And then like, I, other, there are some other really great design programs out there, but then you have to download them to your machine and upload them to schedule. And when you do it all in Tailwind, it's already there. Yeah, that makes sense. It's great to have it all all in there. So you, ca you can use, if, if you're a Photoshop guru, you could use that or some of the other web-based sure. ones. But why like why bother whether you've got it all there? And that makes yeah, sense so about, the, about the loopy thing because... <laughs> because like a lot of the other platforms, like Twitter, for example, they, I don't know when this was, it's a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. they put in this rule, no duplicate tweets. You know, a lot of people would put, put you know, put cycle through the same tweets yes. over and over again. And although it sounds like Pinterest isn't banning that practice, it's at least right. saying, we don't really want you to do this. And so you've got to take, yeah. you've got to take that seriously, I think. Well, you do. And then you have to look at what's working. So yeah. we, we did a bunch of studies earlier in the year and we found that, yeah, there there is some benefit in resharing, especially saving a pin to a, another rele like really relevant board. However, the vast majority of the engagement you get is with that very first time you save it out. Mm. Yeah, so make sure that you uh, share that first one to the right board and you optimize it properly. So we're, we're coming to the end of the show and I wanted to ask you this because a lot of people will be thinking, oh, Pinterest, Ian, Pinterest, this it's another network I need to think about. They're either, they're either completely fully in Pinterest, they love it. You know, like uh, I know that S Samantha uh, was using it for, for you know personal use. Uh, we've got Regine, who's uh, saying she's fallen out of love with uh, Pinterest. Well, kind of not so much, but she's not so sure what to use it for um, business wise. Mm -hmm. What, you know, if we have, say, ten, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes each day to focus on our Pinterest marketing and we've got a live show or a podcast as well, that's that's our primary content that we have. Uh, it, we've got a blog as well. What should we be doing every day to yeah. up level our Pinterest marketing? So I think like one day a week, you're going to take that few minutes just to promote your current content, right? So the, the thing that just went live and is available as, as a replay, you're going to spend some time chopping up that video, uh, making an idea pin, sh sending out a video pin. Um, the other days of the week, so that day might take you a little bit longer, but the rest of the days of the week, what I would do, especially if you haven't shared your existing content on Pinterest, makes me a little bit jealous because you, you're kind of sitting on a gold mine. So go back to your older posts that are still relevant and make a couple of, of pin images in Tailwind Create. Take you just a couple minutes and then schedule them out. Schedule one out for today. Uh, schedule the other one out for two months from now, right? Because we, we talked about how that activity really peaks at about two months. So give yourself a gift <laughs> for two months in the future with that second image. And you can do that in Tailwind Create. So uh, we looked at how long people were spending to create a pin image, 1.8 minutes per image, which mm. we also asked people how long they were taking in other platforms and it was 15 minutes. So you, you can do that inside of Tailwind. 
That's good. We we want we want to be really careful with our time. We don't want to be spending hours yeah. and hours on all this stuff. So I think that's great. You've created a you've got a, you've gone live. You created this uh, content quickly and easily. You've avoided perfectionism syndrome, which as a recovering perfectionist I love. And you've then got this piece of content that you can uh, cut up. You can uh, you can create images. You can go into descript and uh, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can create video pins, idea pins. Uh, and image pins as well. There's so much stuff that you can do. I, I, I assume like an audiogram probably wouldn't work quite so well uh, because I mean, that would be like a video pin. But again, you've only got a short amount of time on that. Would you say, is it yeah. just images and videos? I have seen them. I think it's always worth testing, uh, having that element on there of movement if it is playing in the feed could attract attention. Um, but I don't, I don't feel like people are going to Pinterest to specifically find a podcast episode. So yeah. I would be more likely to draw them in with the concept and the benefit of what they're going to learn. Definitely. That sounds awesome. Well, we are yeah. out of time, Elisa. Thank you so much uh -huh. for spending this time with us today. It's been a great My fun. Pleasure. I've learned loads when it comes to Pinterest, and I know that uh, you watching or listening will have too. If you want to uh, find out more about Tailwind, you can go, this is an affiliate link, if you go to iag.me forward slash go forward slash Tailwind, you can go there and uh, you can sign up and have a little play with it. And how can people find out more about you, Elisa? What's the best place? Oh, probably twitter or instagram or pinterest and it's all elisa m meredith <laughs> happy yes. to connect over there that would be awesome well do 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 um do connect with elisa she's great on all of those platforms i'm glad you said pinterest there as well <laughs> and <laughs> i did <laughs> yes. you, you need to check out elisa's amazing painting as well tell us a, just before we go oh. just uh, about your painting because uh, i love what you do Oh, thank you so much. It's fluid art. So I think it's a little bit cheating. Um, <laughs> but there's a little bit of science and experimentation in there. So it's basically very thin consistency paint that you can move around and it creates these beautiful cells. And it's just it's so fun and relaxing as a as a recovering um, perfectionist painter who like to do things that were super realistic and were never really happy with them. This is very freeing. Highly recommend it uh, if you need to just kind of be creative, but with no pressure. Yeah, it is very relaxing to, to, to watch, actually. So, oh, good. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's what we need. That's what we need. Well, thank you so much, Elise. It's been great to have you on thank the you. show. Uh, just a reminder that uh, next episode, I've got Dr. Tamara Rozier talking about ADHD mindset optimization tips for entrepreneurs. That's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, but that is it for today. And I just want to leave you with this. I want to encourage you to level up your impact, authority and profits through the power of Confident Live video. See you soon. Toodaloo. Bye. Thanks for watching the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. Make sure you subscribe at iag.me forward slash podcast so you can continue to level up your impact, authority and profits through the power of live video. And until next time, toodaloo. toodaloo.